Welcome back to Chat Room. Tonight we're joined by Andrew Ross and Ross Patterson who have been on an incredible journey in the Middle East looking at biblical sites. Now one of the sites that you went to was, the first site you went to was the Noah's Ark site. Tell me about that. Tell me about arriving there. Well, um, this is a site, it's controversial. It was identified in 1959 by aerial photographs. And as far as we knew, nothing had been taken from the air quite like that ever since. You can see it on Google Earth but nothing good and nice, nice high detail. And so of course with this machine here we got some great photos. We wanted to reproduce the 1959 aerial photo and we did in colour up to date and that was quite eye opening because the site itself you can see hasn't changed at all. Everything around it has, has moved and altered because it's in a big mud flow but the site itself has remained absolutely the same and that's what we revealed with this little device on yeah. this trip which was really good. Is it sealed off the area? Or can you just walk into it? Well, it's, uh, it's under martial law, effectively, because Turkey's like two countries in one. You've got the Kurdish half and the Turkish half, and the Kurds and the Turks, sort of, there's been a bit of a civil war, actually. More than 40,000 people have been killed in this war. And so the, the area's under martial law. The, the army has control. Even going from the airport to the site, you go through five checkpoints. You've got to show your passport. Wow. This is within Turkey. But it's, it's not difficult to move around, it's, it's fine because um, the army is in control. In the past people have been kidnapped and that's hindered the research but it's not too bad to move around now. Mm. And what was, um, how long can the helicopter stay in the, in the air around that area? So what? Uh, well it is at an altitude of around 1600 to 2000 metres, um, so the air is pretty thin there. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's like being on the top of Ruapehu, the top of the Bruce. But, um, this can, can fly for about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how, uh, how aggressive I am with the manoeuvres. But uh, basically it, it allowed us to, uh, to, to get angles of the site that had never been taken before by, by film. Uh, places that you literally couldn't get a vantage point um, by standing on the ground and uh, also directly from, from above. So mm. we took it up to about 500 metres uh, above the site, which is half a kilometre, kilometre and then took a, a photo straight down. We got some fantastic shots. Wow. What was it like for you? You've been to the site before, haven't you? But what about for you arriving there? I mean, this is a amazing site, Noah's Ark. You know, it must have been quite a feeling arriving there. It certainly was to see it, um, having having studied about it in books and and uh, read on the internet, etc. To actually physically be there and to to see the the scale of this uh, this ship. Um, is very is very amazing, very daunting, mm. um, and we've got some photos uh, that literally show us to scale with this um, this huge uh, shape in the in the in the dirt. So, yeah, real real eye opener. That's what I found quite interesting. I mean, it looked in the photos, you know, quite big, but then you said that's us down there and that's the car, and you look and you actually realise actually how big. So, how big is that, Ross? It's it's five hundred and fifteen feet long. Which is interesting because the Bible says it was 300 cubits. Now, if you there's several cubits, right? There's different cubit lengths from history. There's an Egyptian cubit and a Hebrew cubit. And they're all different lengths. But if you use the cubit that would have been used, that Moses wrote about, it's exactly the right length, which is massive. It's as big as a battleship, put it that way. Yeah, and that it's still there, you know, that it's, you know, after so long is, is quite incredible. Yeah. Well, what you find on the surface, it's not like walking around a pristine boat. Mm. It's obviously, on the surface, there's virtually nothing left. But the shape has been preserved, and what's under the ground is what we want to get at, obviously, ultimately. It needs to be excavated to confirm one way or the other, but the evidence so far is very positive. Yeah. So will it be excavated? Well, we're hoping it will. Yeah. As people have tried for years. Um, because of the politics, because of the, the situation with the martial law in the area, because there's another factor too, I'll share this. Um, what we're dealing with has amazing implications. If this is Noah's Ark, that's hugely significant. And it doesn't quite fit, shall we say, the, the evolutionary paradigm. And so there's resistance, shall we say, in academic circles. The academic circles, universities, tend to be evolutionary orientated. So to find Noah's Ark sort of rattles a few cages, shall we say. So right. that's one of the oppositions as well. You know, getting permits through university is not easy when you're up against, you know, different paradigms, shall we say. Mm. So there's barriers to overcome, but we're going to keep plugging away until maybe one day God will open the doors. Yes. 
And so you spent three or four days there, didn't you, just researching it? Is that you mainly taking photos, looking at it, that sort of thing? Yep, looking around the site. Um, Ross has been there in, in the past and uh, looked for various samples and found some very interesting sort of artefacts in the area, which uh, helped confirm that uh, it, it could indeed be the, the uh, actual site. Um, but the, our purpose this trip was to, uh, to take aerial photographs and to, to reproduce the photograph that was taken in 1959. Uh, they tried to take an aerial photograph back in the late 80s with a hot air balloon, but unfortunately the whole thing caught fire in the car park and uh, oh dear. and so uh, yeah, they got sort of uh, asked to leave town without causing a, a, a ruckus there. Yeah. But it is literally um, the area with the, the Kurds and the Turks, it is a very volatile area. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're, uh, they're careful how, uh, how much of an uh, impact tourists make on the area, mm -hmm. which, yeah. yeah. You must be pretty proud that you got the photo after so long. Yeah, it was it was the uh, the aim of the trip, and we succeeded. Uh, we also wanted to uh, take some some video, and unfortunately that didn't come out particularly well. So we're going to have to take another trip back there. You just have to go back. Have to go back there again <laughs> and, uh, and and do some more. And we're hoping the next trip as well to uh, have some official um, permission to scan the site, uh, and that's really going to take us to the next step. Is if we can get some uh, proper ground penetrating radar scans of the site. Uh, and use that then to uh, go through a university to uh, ask for permission to excavate the site. Mm. So that's what we intend to do with the next trip. Right. Now another place that you wanted to look at was the Red Sea, which we will talk about, but you actually had a bit of a trip to get there as well. So where did you go on from Noah's Ark site? We flew from um, the far side of uh, Turkey, which is the little towns called um, Van, by the way. And we flew from there through Italy down to Cairo, and then we basically retraced the Exodus route across the Sinai Desert to where the Red Sea crossing site is. Again, it's controversial, but the evidence is overwhelming, mm. including where the real Mount Sinai is on just across the shore over in Saudi Arabia. More and more people are realizing this fits the biblical evidence, not the traditional site. Mm. How, what was it like going through the Sinai Desert? Well, it was it was hot and, yes. and dusty and dusty, um, sandy and sandy, <laughs> and we went uh, under the Suez Canal uh, to to travel there from from Cairo. Um, of just a vast space of, of literally nothing, mm. um, and yet all along the side of the road, uh, little stores where you could get your you could get some Pepsi and Coke um, in in the in the middle of the wilderness. It was quite amazing. So. Uh, um, yeah, we've got some great photos uh, in the afternoon. We went for a, a bit of a walk out into the desert just to sort of uh, put ourselves in the picture of what it would be like to, to, to traipse through uh, that desert, you know, mm. night after night. The vastness of it. The vastness of it, yeah. 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 The beautifully uh, desolate and, and yes. sparse, yeah. And the heat, real heat? Luckily we were there in the afternoon, mm. uh, in, the, in the evening, and it wasn't too hot when we were actually out of the air-conditioned van that we were, we were travelling in. So we were very, very lucky to be in an air-conditioned van travelling yes. on the highway. Well stay with us because after the break we'll learn more about this incredible journey.